Hey everyone, Andy Raphael from eTechnics.com and today is the day where we can finally semi kind of lift the lid on Z690, Intel 12th gen processors. And some people may want to go a little bit further. Maybe they're not just happy with having DDR5. Maybe they want to take it to the extreme. That is one heavy board. Let's do this. I wish these files would transfer faster. Come on! Whoa, is that the Firecuda 510 NVMe drive with its blistering fast speeds of 3450 megabytes a second read, 3200 megabytes a second write, and capacities of up to two terabyte? I can have these files transferred in no time. And if I'm looking for the ultimate performance, I could even get the fourth generation Firecuda 520. I better check the link in the description to find out more details. So straight off the bat, I'm not gonna lie, this thing weighs an absolute ton, like literally a ton. And uh, I'm not talking a metric ton, imperial ton, whatever. It just weighs a lot. I'm gonna put it out there. This is the Maximus Z690 Extreme. This is the creme de la creme from ASUS. And this is kind of what we're greeted with. So typical kind of ASUS ROG box. There are a few standout features that obviously we have to comment on. Wi-Fi 6E, the fact that it has support for Intel 12th gen, uh, Socket 11, uh, 1700, DDR5, and PCI Express Gen 5. As we turn the box around, that gives us kind of our first glimpse of kind of what's going on. We do get that first glimpse of kind of the board and some of the standout features, as well as some of the specs. Nothing too out of the ordinary. I mean, spec-wise, let's go through a few of them. It's got Thunderbolt 4, it's got plenty of USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, as well as Gen 2 by 2 ports. Uh, it's got 2.5G Ethernet, 10GBE as well, uh, Wi-Fi 6E, support for DDR5, 6400 megahertz. I mean, that's just unreal. We've got more USB uh, ports, more Thunderbolt ports, Supreme FX, 7.1 sound, lots of M.2s. Let's get it unboxed. Let's have a little look. Now, with these boxes, as soon as you open up, you do kind of get that first glimpse of the board, but I'm going to tease you a little bit. I don't want to show you the board yet because there's a lot to go through. So. Let's move it out of the way. I mean, ooh, there it is. We don't want to show you too much, but let's have a look inside. Everything is actually kind of compartmented. Is that a word, compartmented? We're gonna say it's a word, but inside we can sort of have a little look at what we've got. So we have our Wi-Fi module. Uh, so this is basically our Wi-Fi antenna. So we get our Wi-Fi 6E. Nothing else in that compartment. We also have, I'm going for the smallest compartments first. I want to kind of build up to stuff. I have actually had this unboxed once to do pictures and everything, but I can't remember where anything is. We've got a little case badge sticker, it was kind of nice to have. This is the first one that we've actually seen with a case badge sticker. For anyone who doesn't know, we have previews in written form and video form on YouTube of all of the Z690 boards that we've got at the moment. So there's the Zeus ones, Gigabyte ones, MSI ones, tons of content to chew through, so definitely go check them out. And obviously remember on the 4th of November, we can finally lift the lid on the performance, the benchmark results, that kind of stuff. So make sure you're subscribed and stick around for that. Looks like we get an M.2 standoff and a screw. And another one. And another one. We also get what looks like some kind of single pin connector to a single pin connector. I thought it was a probe at first, but maybe it's some kind of extension for something or other. I'm sure we'll find out and we will obviously put that into our reviews. We get our pads for our M.2s. We get another one of these connectors and another one of these connectors and another. Okay, so there's four of them connectors. They are literally like your front panel header, the single pin, and it just comes out into another single pin, probably, I don't know, 10, 15 centimeters at most. So yeah, it's gonna be interesting to sort of see what that is all about. Opening up the next bit, we have, oh, that's quite interesting. So I'm guessing this is gonna be all of our paperwork and bump and stuff like that. So we have, Ah, so them connectors might actually be for this, the ROG fan controller. This is the installation guide for that. We also have, thank you for buying ROG, kind of typical thing. We have, I'm guessing warranty information. Okay, and this is the USB Type-C to 3.5 mil DAC with AI noise cancelling microphone technology adapter. So there is gonna be one of them inside here as well. We get our typical ROG stickers, so you can put it on your board, put it on your case, put it on your room, whatever you want to do, uh, and also our installation guide as well. So let's put all that to one side and we can move on to the next bit. Lift that up, 
is, there's just stuff everywhere in here, there really is. For any of uh, the people who want to go out and, you know, look hip, look cool, there is a, a little belt buckle thing that you can put on. Still don't understand why they do it. It's not my cup of tea, but I get it, some people like it. We also have addressable three pin, addressable three pin, addressable three pin. So three males into a single female uh, addressable RGB cable, so a splitter cable. We also get a micro USB to what looks like USB 2.0 connector. I'm guessing again, that could be for the fan controller. We do get some SATA cables. So we've got two SATA cables in here, one of them right angled, all with clips, and they are actually braided as well. So quite nice quality. And then we get another set of them as well. So we've got uh, four in total. We get our ROG graphics card holder. So to prevent any kind of sagging and things like that, we have got that. And another set of uh, two SATA cables. Again, one being right angled, one being normal. Inside here, we have, I'm guessing this is gonna be similar to what we saw on the mini ITX board. Kind of gives us some extra functionality. Uh, okay, this one's a bit different. This is the ROG True Volticane. So on here, we have lots of different headers, including, it looks like an addressable header, OSC Sense. We've got that connector, which the cable is for. Uh, connect into your USB as well. Not actually entirely sure what this is. I've, first time I've kind of experienced this, the ROG True Volticam, which kind of says like it's something to do with voltages and things like that. But if anyone knows, put it in the comment section, but we will find out exactly what this is for when we do our uh, fully fledged reviews and stuff. So yeah, quite interesting. I'm gonna keep that to one side so I can have a little look in a little bit. And then we have the big department, which has a little screwdriver, I'm gonna admit, it's not gonna be nowhere near as good as the eTechnics one, which is available on store.etechnics.com, but guessing it has a use, maybe to unscrew some of the heatsink to get to the M.2 drives maybe. So we have that. We have, instead of going with a driver disc, they give us a USB, and that is type A. I would have preferred a type C, especially considering this is gonna be a very expensive board. Uh, we also have the USB type C to 3.5 mil DAC, which has PC, NB, and mobile. So you can actually use this for mobile use as well. So that's quite cool. Uh, obviously should improve your audio. We have a couple of things in packages here. So the first one, if we unwrap that, is gonna be that fan controller hub. So on here, we've got um, fan, RGB, fan, RGB, fan, RGB. So it looks like it has six uh, addressable RGB and six fan connectors, your kind of typical four pin PWM stuff. Little ROG logo on there as well. And on the side, it's got proprietary connector, addressable in, uh, USB, and then uh, temperature sort of probe connectors as well. So kind of a multi-purpose tool really. And then, Beyond that, and this is actually probably what the screwdriver is for, we have our DIM.2. So on here, you'll be able to put one M.2 drive on one side and one M.2 drive on the other side. And this will basically just connect in next to where your memory modules are and give you two extra NVMe drives. So with all that out of the way, let's move that box and we can actually have a look at the board itself. Now I mentioned at the start, that box was heavy. It's literally all in the motherboard. It really is. So let's take it out and have a look. I mean, from the get go, we can see this is huge. EATX form factor, you can see that straight away. ATX would be like here. So EATX form factor, that is a absolutely stunning looking board. I've got to admit, that is gorgeous. Everything is black, everything is shielded to a certain degree. I mean, the whole bottom of the board, there's nothing really going on there that you can see, but I'm sure there's tons of stuff going on underneath here. So <laughs> where do I even start? First up, first view of our socket LGA 1700. So 1700 pins ready to accept our Intel i9-12900K, which we will be testing with and getting all of our performance results. VRMs and phases and stuff, I'm not even gonna hazard a guess how many, but there are chokes down the bottom, there are chokes up here and there are chokes up there. There's capacitors here, 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 here. I mean, it's gotta be close to like 20, 24 phases, something like that. And obviously we will have all that information for our review. Delivering that power directly to the socket is two eight pin connectors at the top, which are pro cool, which means they have solid pins. It's a terrible name, I say it time and time again, but it's gonna give us enough power that we need. We've got a chunky monkey heatsink going up here 
down and around and it looks like it all kind of connects into each other. And that's going to obviously provide ample cooling for the VRMs as well. And it does look like I can see a heat pipe that goes along and goes under here. It looks like it's a solid kind of U-shaped heat pipe, which is obviously going to help dissipate the heat away from here and sort of more down towards here, where you'd like to think air is going to push across the motherboard inside your case. I can't get over the weight of this. For extra kind of cooling and more so rigidity and just to look absolutely cool, we have this full size back plate. I mean, it's literally covering most of the board. You do get the extreme branding on here as well, not that you're ever really gonna see it, but I just can't get over how solid this thing is. It's ridiculous. So, some of the cool things on here. Obviously we have DDR5, so there's four slots on here. I think it's DDR5, uh, 6400 megahertz plus if you're gonna be overclocking and, and so forth. We do have that extra slot here for our DIM.2 that you can put in and have that extra functionality for your NVMe. Along the top, we have a kind of weird looking connector. I'm not even sure what that's for and hopefully the camera can pick this up, but there's a kind of weird looking connector just next to the eight pins. I'm not even sure what that is, but again, we will find out. Plenty of fan headers for your CPU cooler and everything. And you can probably see no 24 pin down here. Like what's going on? Is this this new 12 volt VO thing? No, it's actually the 24 pin and all your major connectors are all kind of right angled down here, which makes cable management so much easier, I've got to admit. So we do have plenty of connectors here. Let's have a look. We've got ARGB, we've got water pump, we've got channel fan, we've got an ATX 24 pin, we've got an extra six pin to provide power. This isn't the first board that we've seen that on either. Like I mentioned, we've got loads of previews on loads of other boards, so check them out. It's very, very similar. Uh, we do have a Type-C front panel here. Looks like another Type-C here, but the kind of more like external looking one. We have USB 3.2 Gen 1, two of them. We have a radiator fan port. We've got six SATA ports for anyone who's still using that. There is a massive strip of RGB going up here as well. So it's gonna light up really, really nice. And I can tell you now this all lights up RGB and so does this bit, which kind of really flows into the design of the board and looks absolutely amazing. Down the bottom, there are more connectors and buttons than you can shake a stick at. We have front panel, water flow, water out, water in, water pump, rad fan, safe boot, BIOS switch, retry button, LN2 mode, OSC sense, which is that uh, thing that I showed you, the little connector. So that must somehow connect into that. We have USB 2.0, VLATCH, slow mode, RSVD, RSVD3, addressable RGB, normal RGB, B clock. Uh, that looks like a battery BIOS switch, uh, B clock, plus and minus, I think. So you can actually overclock by the looks of it on the fly just by adjusting the B clock using these buttons and our front panel audio. I mean, come on. Like, what's your case gonna look like? Your whole system, surely there's just gonna be cables absolutely everywhere, but I don't care. I'm excited because it's an extreme board and there's nothing more to get excited about than an extreme board. We do have Supreme FX audio down here as well, which is all shielded under here. I can just see the capacitors. In terms of the PCI Express, we've got an X16 slot, which I'm guessing is Gen 5. We've got another X16 slot, which again is Gen 5, but even though it's X16, it's only got the pins up to uh, X8 physical. And then we've got our X1 slot as well. So not really too much going on, but enough for the type of user who's gonna need this. I mean, how many people really use more than just a GPU these days? You might have a string card in there, which can sit in there, like an Elgato um, capture card or something like that. That's pretty much it. Most motherboards, especially something like this, come with kind of everything that you're gonna need. We do have uh, M.2 under here. So it says, this is PCI Express 5.0 M.2, and it does share bandwidth with the X16 1 and X16 2. Please refer to azus.com for detailed configurations. So it's one of them ones where if you're using this, then it might limit the speeds at this. If you're using that, then it might limit the speeds at that, that kind of stuff. But you have got this huge heatsink here, which I'm guessing that's why you get the screwdriver to take this off and actually take it off to put your M.2 on there. So you've got one there. I'm guessing there's then gonna be, I can see another connector under there. So there's at least two, then two in the dim, uh, dim.2 as well. So at least four. There could even potentially be a fifth one under here without actually taking it off, which we will find out for our review and everything. Um, yeah, that's kind of what you're, what you're faced with. This all lights up as well and actually, uh, so as I mentioned, this lights up, this lights up, and this is actually a screen which uh, I believe you can customize and everything as well, but it does come up with ROG and Extreme and stuff like that. As we kind of go around past this screen, which wraps around to the rear IO, that's when we are greeted with oh so many connectors. So on here, we can see we have clear CMOS, BIOS flashback, HDMI, USB, SuperSpeed 10, 
more USBs, 10 GBE, which is from Aquantia, uh, 2.5G as well. We've got another super speed. We've got a USB type C. Uh, this one's Thunderbolt. I'm guessing that one is as well. There's another one over here as well. Uh, BIOS flashback USB, but you can use that for other things as well. More USB ports, Wi-Fi 6E connectors, gold plated audio connectors for our 7.1 Supreme FX audio and an SP diff optical. Have I missed anything? <laughs> I feel like this board has got absolutely everything. And it's got a little party trick as well. Now, anyone who's watched our video on the Hero board will know kind of where I'm going with this. But if you've got a large cooler on here, you've got this massive heatsink, you've got a graphics card that is literally butt up against here. And obviously they all conform to certain standards, but trying to get this little latch just here can be a nightmare. But if I put it up, so we can imagine there's a graphics card in there. You might be able to see there's just this little kind of cord. And what that does is connects to this button. So what you can do if I hold it like that, it actually pulls that latch open. So I'll show you again. If I close it up, pull this little latch. I mean, it's such a simple design idea, but it's such a such a great thing. Whenever we're doing GPU testing and we use uh, ASUS ROG boards, I'm always trying to like get a screwdriver in there or trying to kind of leverage my hand in there just to get the GPU out to put another one in. And it's a nightmare, but this has fixed it. And like I say, this is a feature on the Hero board as well. And speaking of the Hero board, like I mentioned, we have got a lot of content on lots of other boards. So we have got Z690 Hero. We've got Z690 iGaming Wi-Fi. We've got boards that aren't here right now, but from Gigabyte and MSI. If you don't want DDR5, we've got the Tough Gaming Z690 Plus Wi-Fi D4, which does still take DDR4. We've got it all. So uh, definitely check out all the other videos. Check out etechnics.com where we have write-ups on all this stuff. And remember to subscribe because we have got performance figures, results, all that wonderful good stuff about what we can actually do in conjunction with the 12th gen processors coming on the 4th of November. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know exactly what to do. And I will see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.